there are a ton of different MBTI dating apps at the moment. I worked most with Type Match app from Kate Katora, uh, but there is a ton of different apps out there that provide different uh, methodologies to help you find your perfect match. And most of these uh, apps, they work in a similar way. You fill out the personality test, you get a personality type result after taking a quiz and you get to decide, okay, I am this type or no, I'm not that type, I'm a different type. And then you're going to switch it uh, and correct it. And then after that, you get matched with other type personality types. So if you say you're an INFJ, uh, the people at uh, that dating app are going to say, okay, algorithm, this person needs to date this and this and this personality type. So they have a set personality types in mind that they want to match you up with and they want to get you to talk to these personality types. Now, the thing is, the thing that I think is, is that um, what I want to avoid is that people have this idea that, oh, there is one personality type that you should be dating and one personality type that is going to be good for you. I don't believe that's the case. So the way I see it, most people have um, preferences about what kind of people they would like to date but most people's preferences tend to be individual so I'd say the best thing an app can do is they can say you can select and choose for yourself instead of going to a date with a checklist looking for you know where is my introvert I want to date introverts exclusively you know uh, what you want to do instead is you want to think of if I meet an extrovert how can I make sure that my boundaries as an introvert are protected and safeguarded? And how can I make sure that, that person understands and respects my need for alone time? Because you're going to see that certain extroverts can be clingy and overbearing, but other extroverts are really quite chill about the fact that you're an introvert and actually give you space and actually respect you and actually like accept you and let you be who you are. And here's the kind of thing we should all model ourselves towards, you know. Instead of uh, wanting other people to fit a certain image or to be a certain way towards us, to be a certain type for us, we focus too much on the idea that we have to find the right person, our soulmate, who will naturally effortlessly complete us. Instead of trying to find our soulmate, what I'd say is, you know, uh, try to focus on how you can have meaningful connections and relationships with any of the 16 personality types, namely, Instead of thinking, how can I find a person who will fit me? Uh, like it's a recruitment process, like you're going out on dates and you're trying to recruit the right fit for your company, uh, Eric Thor Inc., you know? Instead of what you want to think about is, okay, here's this person. What is their story? What is interesting about them? And how can I have a good conversation with this person? If they have a certain style, a certain way of thinking, a certain way of working, how can I connect with this person? Okay, if this person seems a bit guarded, what can I do to get them to open up? And here's people that go like, oh no, this person seems too shy or too stiff, so I don't think I could hang out with that kind of a person, you know? Like, that's your loss in a sense, because most people today are struggling to form genuine connections, and a lot of people are struggling with loneliness. I think one survey in the, um, was it New York Times recently showed that more than 60% of all the millennials today struggle with serious feelings of loneliness. And we're all looking for somebody to connect with and we're all feeling lonely and we're all feeling like, nope, not that person doesn't exist. Like we can't find that person that we can have good conversations with because everyone around us seems so stiff and guarded and shy. Maybe they, that's how they perceive us too. You know, <laughs> Maybe that's what they think about you as well. Uh, and uh, to be better if other people were more emotionally open and confident and easier to be around just naturally, certainly, but you can't change that. You can't change uh, if the person you step into the cafe, is that, if that person is your soulmate or not, but you can change in yourself how you connect with that person and how you discover if that person really is your soulmate. Uh, here we go, like talking about the red flags you know, everyone's talking about the red flags and how, uh, you know, you have to watch out for this and this. And if that person uh, hints at, you know, having had a bad relationship or um, just having broken up, well, you should probably not date that person, you know, and uh, you have all those, those red flags in your head. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're all a bit messed up from those things and from those experiences, right? Um, and now it's like really hard to talk about those things because we can't talk about, we shouldn't talk about our 
past dating history with other people we shouldn't you know uh, <laughs> uh, like say this and that you know like everything about the relationship and the dating scene becomes entirely scripted because everyone goes to a date with a set story they need to tell the other person you know hey I, I'm this attractive person that you're uh, going to be super interested in that has this super interesting life that has this great job that is doing all these amazing things and has this amazing personality <laughs> uh, you know um, and that person um, they don't have time to think about or even notice if you're an interesting person or not because they're so focused on appearing interesting to you and they want you to be interested in them and you want them to be interested in you but <laughs> there is no bound there's no ground for connection here uh, because uh, you're so focused on how you are perceived going on to that date and talking with that person but you're not at all focused on whether that other person is actually attractive or not or on the other way around you're so focused on you know a set set of criteria that they are supposed to have so you go into that date and you're like focused on you know getting that person to meet your needs uh, but at the end of the date, you know, okay, maybe sure they, they met up most of those criteria and hey, this person seems like potential, but that person isn't interested in you because you've been so focused on them fitting on like finding that person that will fit your needs, but they have no idea if you fit their needs. So uh, we can have those two struggles. Now, uh, MBTI dating apps, uh, I think they can be great because they do get you to think about and connect with other people and they do open up the opportunities you know like I'm not here to diss MBTI dating apps to say like oh don't use them you know uh, the truth is I think you know type match app for example and others can be great so hey why not just try them well you have nothing to lose you know uh, I'm saying when you go on to those the apps I say don't try to limit yourself to a specific personality type try to keep an open mind and when you go out to dates and when you talk to these people try to think about okay knowing their personality how can I make sure that I have a good conversation with them hey if they're a thinking type how can I get them to talk about a topic that they're interested in or something that they are good at or a skill that they have because you know that's when thinking types blossom up thinking types are the most uh, energizing and fun you know when they get to talk about uh, and when they are challenged intellectually uh, on that level so because a relationship is a separate entity it's the combined alchemical chemistry of two people connecting as one you know uh, so a relationship is a space that opens up between two people and what's interesting is not who that person is individually but who you two are together <laughs> so yeah that was my rant on relationships i hope you enjoyed it um I'm just gonna say first of all see maybe it was a roast I'm sorry if it was um, if it was I hope it was a fun roast uh, I know sometimes when I make these kind of videos uh, uh, what ends up happening is I get so hardcore that I'm reading what I'm writing and I'm like Jesus Christ did I write that that sounds so mean and I feel so mean and I often worry that I'm mean uh, and then I ask people was I mean and they're like no <laughs> no, you weren't mean, you know. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. That's like the sweetest, like easiest thing you could have said, you know. Like it wasn't mean at all. It was just, I don't know, uh, honest. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> uh, but I always do uh, worry. <laughs>